Turn up, mother factors. My name is Sam, and today I'm here to talk to you all about World War II. The cataclysmic 20th century war is a perennial favourite subject for movies, TVs and video games, but I'd wager there's an awful lot you probably don't know about the six year conflict. Oh damn it, I just gave you a fact in the intro. Oh, never mind, you can have that one for free. So, how did a dog deliciously named Chips help the US Army? How did London foil German bombers with balloons? And when is Inglorious Bastards 2 coming out? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so stick on your gas mask, keep calm, and carry on watching 101 Facts About World War II. Number 1 The subject of World War II is immensely complex and detailed, so discussions about it are exactly that, complex and detailed. And surprisingly, not all that easy to put into a 101 Facts format. However, summed up in the simplest, broadest manner possible, World War II was a devastating global war that lasted from 1939 to 1945, involving the vast majority of the world's nations. Number 2 A global war is one that involves many of the world's countries, or most of the prominent and powerful ones. It's commonly agreed that there have only been two global wars in history so far, which are creatively known as World War I and World War II. Number 3 World War II officially began in 1939, although related conflicts began earlier, sort of like warm-up friendlies before the main tournament, if we're uh, going to be offensively simplistic about it. Number 4 for instance, Japan was already at war with China when World War II broke out, in a conflict known as the Second Sino-Japanese War. Japan believed the only way to solve its economic woes was to expand and gain more territory, which it attempted to do by invading China. It's a bit like not being able to pay your mortgage so you just take over your neighbour's house. More on that later. Number 5 World War II officially began on the 1st of September 1939 with the invasion of Poland by Nazi Germany and the subsequent declarations of war on Germany by Britain and France. Number 6 Adolf Hitler, that absolute ass, was the leader of the Nazi party, in case you weren't aware. Along with his cartoonishly evil plans for world domination, Hitler also wanted to make sure the Aryan race dominated by wiping out impurities, which he considered were Jewish people, Romani people, disabled people and gay people. Told you, he was an ass. Number 7 The war was fought between two opposing military alliances, one known as the Allies and the other known as Axis. Spoiler alert, the Allies won, just in case you didn't know. Number 8 The Axis was a loose alliance of expansionist countries, i.e. countries that wanted to get bigger, aligned against the Allies. While they agreed on their opposition to the Allies, they were not completely in coordination, and essentially had different reasons for going to war. Number 9 The Axis got its name from Benito Mussolini. Following a treaty between Germany and Italy, Mussolini declared that from then on the rest of Europe, and indeed the rest of the world, would revolve around the Axis of Roman Berlin. See, it's not just a cool sounding word. Number 10 In response, the Allies were formed to oppose Axis aggression. The Allies were known as the United Nations after the 1st of January 1942 declaration, and after the war the Allies were the foundations of the creation of what we now know as the United Nations. Number 11 Between late 1939 and early 1941, Nazi Germany managed to conquer and control much of continental Europe. Despite a large number of combined army personnel, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg and France proved no match for the likes of those Nazi scumbags. Number 12 on the 22nd of June 1941, the European Axis powers decided to invade the Soviet Union, which opened the largest land theatre of war in history. Known as Operation Barbarossa, which is surprisingly nothing to do with Geoffrey Rush's character in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, the plan would ultimately end in total failure, partially due to the somehow unexpected horror of Rush's infamously treacherous winters. Brr. Number 13 Insanely, before being attacked at Pearl Harbor and joining the Allies, the United States was home to many Nazi supporters. Among them was the German-American Bund, which was formed to encourage a favourable view of Nazi Germany. Oh, you done goofed, German-American Bund. You done goofed. Number 14. It's become fairly well known that several members of the royal family and many British aristocrats had links to Hitler and his party. Edward VIII was an admirer of the Führer, and in 2015, footage emerged showing a six-year-old Queen Elizabeth being taught the Nazi salute. Number 15. Hitler had designed the Nazi insignia himself. The red represented the social idea of Nazism, the white stood for nationalism, and the black swastika represented the struggle, I'm doing the inverted commas there, of the Aryan man. Number 16. However, he did not invent the famous Nazi symbol. The swastika was actually an ancient symbol of spiritual and religious power and was widely used in Indian subcontinents. 
But ever since Hitler stole it, it's unsurprisingly been left with a truly awful reputation. Number 17. At about 10 to 8 on the morning of the 7th of December 1941, hundreds of Imperial Japanese aircraft attacked the American naval base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Almost 2,500 people were killed, several American warships were sunk or damaged, and almost 200 American planes were destroyed. And Michael Bay made a film about it, but that was a long time later. The next day, President Roosevelt declared war on Japan. Number 18. So why did Japan attack the United States at Pearl Harbor in the first place, I hear you ask? Well, after Japan invaded China, the United States leveled a number of economic sanctions and trade embargoes against them, expecting this to halt their desire to grow so aggressively. Instead, it just seemed to make them more determined. Number 19. Nobody expected Japan to attack Hawaii in this way. It's around 4,000 miles away and there are a number of more obvious targets much closer to Japan. However, this actually made Pearl Harbor a prime target, as it was relatively undefended with many ships and planes moored very closely together. Number 20. Because the assault was carried out without warning or a formal declaration of war, the attack on Pearl Harbor was ruled a war crime at the Tokyo Trials. Gosh, this is a fun video this week, isn't it? Number 21. In the closing stages of World War II, Japan began to carry out suicide attacks known as kamikaze, which involved pilots flying their planes directly into their targets. This was thought to be more effective at destroying Allied warships than their conventional methods of attack, and showed how desperately they were losing. It's also the inspiration behind an attack of the same name in the video game series Worms. Not relevant? No. Let's move on. Number 22. Ooh. Kamikaze means divine wind in Japanese, which is a reference to the typhoons that destroyed an invading Mongolian fleet in the 13th century, saving Japan from attack. Number 23. Estimates of how many kamikaze pilots actually hit their intended target vary somewhat, but one analysis put the hit rate as low as 11%. Most kamikaze pilots were either shot down or missed their target entirely. Number 24. However, they did manage to sink 47 Allied ships and damage 300 others. Good for them, I guess? No. Ultimately, the kamikaze effort wasn't enough to counter the growing Allied advantage in the Pacific. Number 25. As you may be aware, this video isn't as hilarious as the others. And just as a warning, here's the part where things get ultra dark and serious. Between 1941 and 1945, Nazi Germany carried out a campaign of genocide known as the Holocaust. The primary victims of the Holocaust were Jewish people. Extensive study of this period confirms that approximately 6 million Jews were murdered. Number 26. In Hebrew, the Holocaust is known as the Shoah, which means catastrophe or destruction. Number 27. Along with Jewish people, Romanese, ethnic Slavs, communists, Jehovah's Witnesses and gay men were among those persecuted in the Holocaust. Number 28. The camps and death centres were set up in Poland to facilitate the Nazis' final solution. At the height of operations, up to 6,000 people were gassed every day at Auschwitz. Number 29. Among the horror of the Holocaust, small stories of hope do shine through. Prisoner Stanisława Leszczynska, who was a midwife, delivered over 3,000 babies while she was imprisoned at Auschwitz. Many hospitals and organisations in Europe were named after her in her honour. Number 30. One of the most iconic figures of World War II was Anne Frank, hiding from the Nazis with her family and neighbours because they were Jewish. You remember her, she's the lady who Justin Bieber said would probably have been a believer. Anyway, Anne's diary gave great perspective to people all around the world of the dangers and the urgency of survival for the Jewish people. Number 31. Anne Frank and her sister Margot were sent to Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in 1945, and she died just one month before the camp was liberated by the British. It was said that 50,000 people were killed in this camp. Number 32. Max Heilger was a fake name the SS used to make bank accounts when they laundered stolen money, jewels and gold from European Jews. The name Heiliger is a cynical Nazi attempt at humour, as it comes from the German Heilig, meaning holy. Number 33. Before the Nazis decided on the final solution, they had the Madagascar Plan, which was nothing to do with the DreamWorks hit film of the same name. The plan was to relocate the Jewish population of Europe to Madagascar, where it would be run as a police state and most of the deported Jews would perish as a result of the island's harsh conditions. Number 34. The tide began to turn against the Axis powers in 1942 when Japan lost the critical Battle of Midway. Prior to this battle, the Japanese were on the offensive, but a decisive victory for the US Pacific Fleet gave the Americans and the rest of the Allies the advantage in the Pacific. Number 35. 
Hitler ended up executing 84 of his own generals, mainly for plotting against him. See, even his mates thought he was a knob. Number 36. One such general was Klaus von Stauffenberg, who tried to assassinate Hitler using a bomb in a suitcase. The bomb killed several people, but all Hitler suffered from were some ruined trousers from the bomb, rather than anything else. Number 37. The war ultimately ended with the invasion of Germany by the Allies and the Soviet Union, culminating in the Battle of Berlin, days after which Hitler committed suicide and Germany surrendered. Hooray! F you, Hitler! Number 38. Hitler killed himself along with his wife, Eva Braun. Braun died of cyanide poisoning, but reports differ on how Hitler killed himself, whether it was just the poison or a combination of cyanide and a gunshot wound through the mouth. Number 39. Following their suicide, the bodies of Hitler and Braun were taken out through the back exit of the Führer bunker, doused in petrol, and set alight, all of which were Hitler's own orders. Number 40. Germany offered its unconditional surrender on the 8th of May 1945. Hooray! This day was declared Victory in Europe Day and is celebrated in many European countries. The 8th of May is also Enrique Iglesias' birthday, although I don't think these two facts are particularly related. Number 41. However, Japan refused to surrender. This prompted the United States to drop two atomic bombs in Japan, first in Hiroshima on the 6th of August 1945, and then three days later on the 9th in Nagasaki. The mean- no, number 42. Estimates of the combined death total of the two bombs varies between a conservative 150,000 up to a horrifyingly possible 300,000 people. Number 43. Survivors of atomic bombs in Japan are called hibakusha, which means explosion-affected people. Particularly lucky or unlucky people, depends how you look at it, who survived both explosions were known as niju hibakusha, essentially meaning double explosion-affected people. Though dozens of said people are thought to exist, only one man, Tsutomu Yamaguchi, has been actually recognised by the government of Japan as a survivor of both the blasts. Number 44. Had the United States deemed it necessary for a third atomic bomb, the city targeted would have been Tokyo. Number 45. Following these devastating atomic attacks, Japan surrendered on the 15th of August 1945. The official surrender document was signed on the 2nd of September, officially bringing the Second World War to an end. That was 101 facts about World War II. Oh no, wait, we're only at fact 45? Well, alrighty then. Number 46. After the war concluded, the victorious powers, the United States, the Soviet Union, China, the United Kingdom, and France, became the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Number 47. Despite their shared victory in World War II, the Soviet Union and the United States emerged as rival superpowers, and spent the next 46 years competing in a series of international penis measuring contests known as the Cold War. They also both became obsessed with space too, but I've spoken about that for nearly two weeks in a row now, so I won't bring it up again. Number 48. So-called rat lines were a network of escape routes that were set up for fascists to flee Europe after the war ended. Many escaped to South America, Australia, Canada and the Middle East. These rat lines weren't just tunnels, by the way, otherwise we could all use them instead of airplanes. Number 49. There were some brave doggos during the war. One of the most famous World War dogs was Smokey the Yorkshire Terrier, who would use his extraordinarily strong sense of smell to warn off incoming artillery shells. Smokey was part of a dozen combat missions and survived over 150 air raids. Number 50. Another famous dog was Chips, who was a German Shepherd Siberian Husky mix, but was weirdly on the Allies' side. Ah, oh, who's a cute little spy? Chip helped capture 10 enemy Italian soldiers and was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, the Purple Heart, and the Silver Star for his bravery. However, these awards were later revoked, as it was thought giving such honours to dogs was demeaning the human soldiers who had also earned them. Number 51. During World War II, a fully grown reindeer called Pollyanna was kept aboard the British submarine HMS Trident for six weeks. The Russians gave the animal to the crew as a gift. Um, thanks, Russia? Number 52. Soldiers from Poland, while in Italy, enlisted the help of a bear called Wojtek to help them carry ammunition while travelling. The bear was purchased as a cub and was raised as a pet. After the war, he lived out the rest of his days in Edinburgh Zoo. Number 53. Around 550,000 Jewish men served in the US Armed Forces. However, only two Jewish soldiers were awarded the Medal of Honor. Number 54. 650,000 Jeeps were built during the war and the US produced 300,000 military aircraft and 89,000 tanks. Tanks for the memories. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh really, people died. 
Number 55. They also produced 3 million machine guns and 7 million rifles. As my grandmother used to say, you can never have too many guns. Number 56. The Nazi salute was influenced by salutes of Italian fascists, who claim that the armed movement descends from an ancient salute from the Roman Empire. However, very little evidence for this claim actually exists. Many academics point to the 1784 painting by Jacques-Louis David, entitled The Oath of the Harati, as inspiration for the now pretty taboo gesture. Number 57. The Blitz was a sustained period of bombings against Britain carried out over eight months, beginning on the 7th of September in 1940. The Luftwaffe dropped 14,000 tonnes of bombs on the docks and streets of the East End of London. Number 58. The word Blitz comes from the German word for lightning. This would sound cool if it wasn't for the fact that the Blitz actually wasn't a lightning war at all, and it killed loads of people. Number 59. During the Blitz, inflatable barrage balloons were used to protect cities in Britain during the air raid. The balloons were released and trailed by a steel cable. Because of the balloons, the attacking planes would have to fly higher, significantly reducing their accuracy. Additionally, if one of the balloons popped, it would comically whiz out in the air and possibly land on a German plane's windshield. I mean, maybe, in theory. It, it could have happened. Number 60. Though most of the bombings were concentrated on London, other cities that were targeted during the Blitz were Liverpool, Swansea, Bristol and Birmingham, as well as several others. Number 61. Soho's Saucy Windmill Theatre, which hosted nude performances and an all manner of risque entertainment that I definitely have never been to, <laughs> me, no way, <laughs> never closed during the Blitz. In fact, the theatre used the phrase, we never closed, as a slogan for many years after the war. Number 62. The famous We Can Do It poster was not seen by a lot of the public, even though it was published in 1942. The poster regained popularity in the 80s in the feminist movement. Number 63. British soldiers were only given three sheets of toilet paper per day, while American soldiers were given 22. See, American portions are like my love for Jennifer Lawrence. Huge. Nintendo 64. Irina Sendler is another brave and iconic figure of the war who helped around 2,500 children out of the ghettos in Warsaw to save places with new identities. She kept a jar of the real names buried in her back garden, but unfortunately almost all of the children's parents had either been killed or gone missing over the course of the war. Number 65. The youngest serviceman was US soldier Calvin Graham, who is aged 21. That's not even that young. Oh no, sorry, I read that wrong. 12. 12? He lied about his age when he enlisted into the Navy, and they never picked up on it. A lying 12-year-old? Never. Number 66. Hitler's nephew, William Patrick Hitler, who changed his surname to Stuart Houston, very, very sensible William, served in the US Navy during the war. In fact, he was wounded in action and was awarded a Purple Heart. Number 67. None of Stuart Houston's sons had any children. According to his son, Alexander, there was no pact to deliberately end the Hitler bloodline, contrary to significant speculation. Number 68. Many consider the largest battle of World War II to be the Battle of Stalingrad. Estimates of the number of men killed in the battle range between 800,000 and 1,600,000, making it one of the bloodiest battles in recorded history. Number 69. Ooh. Just a quick break from Stalingrad to say, to make them sound less German, America renamed hamburgers and frankfurters Liberty Steaks and Liberty Sausages. If that sounds ridiculous, they started calling sauerkraut Liberty Cabbage. God damn, America loves freedom, eh? Number 70. The siege of Stalingrad resulted in more Russian deaths, military and civilian, than the US and Britain sustained combined in all of World War II. Number 71. If you're still not getting how many men died at that time, get this. Only 20% of Russian men born in 1923 survived this war. Number 72. The camouflage pattern for the US Navy, or frog skin as it's called, was designed by Norvell Gillespie, the editor of Better Homes and Gardens. Bit of a career change there, but hey, good going Norvell. Number 73. Rudolf Hess, who was Hitler's deputy, was the last person to be incarcerated in the Tower of London, where he was kept for over a year. Number 74. While Her Madge, Queen Elizabeth II, is often nowadays thought of as a nice old lady in Buckingham Palace, back in World War II she was decidedly more badass. The Queen, who was then known as Princess Elizabeth, served as a driver and mechanic during the war. You go, Liz. Number 75. 
A lieutenant colonel with the most British name imaginable, John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill, no relation to Winston, aka Mad Jack, fought battles during the war with a longbow and a sword, Skyrim style He's known to have killed at least one enemy with his bow and arrow, which was apparently the last recorded kill with a longbow in war history. Number 76. Britain was still paying back its World War II debt to the US and Canada as late as in 2006. A 50-year payment plan was set up in 1950, and the final instalment was over $80 million, which was paid six years late. The Soviet Union had the same program, however, they just flat out refused to pay it back. Number 77. In the course of the Second World War, between 50 million and 85 million people were killed. This makes World War II the deadliest conflict in human history. Yep, just another feel-good video from 101 Facts here. Number 78. 80% of those deaths came from four countries, Russia, China, Germany, and Poland. Over 50% of the casualties were civilians, with the majority of those being women and children. Number 79. A number of countries, including Spain, Switzerland, Sweden, and Ireland, remained neutral throughout the war and did not choose either side. Number 80. After rumours that the Nazis were developing a death ray began to surface, British engineer Robert Watson Watts was instructed to develop one too. He correctly believed this was unfeasible, but he did manage to develop one of the first radar systems in the course of his research. Number 81. It's thought that Hitler was taking a nap when the Allies landed on Normandy and D-Day, but nobody dared wake him up because he was known for his outbursts when things didn't go his way. He must have been mega pissed when he woke up, and a pissed Hitler can't have been nice. Number 82. Robert Kappa was the brave photographer who took photos on D-Day and various other events during the war. His D-Day photos were called the Magnificent Eleven. He had taken 106 pictures in total, but most of them had perished in a photo lab accident. Number 83. Russia was one of the first countries to have women on the front line. Almost one million Soviet women took up arms as snipers, fighter pilots, etc, etc. Number 84. Lyudmila Pavlichenko was a particularly notable example of a female fighter for the Soviets. She racked up an impressive and unsettling 309 confirmed kills, 36 of which were German snipers. No word on whether or not there were 360 no-scopes, though. Number 85. Speaking of snipers, another terrifyingly efficient stealth-killing machine was Simo Heiha, a sniper for the Finnish army. He is thought to have killed over 500 Soviet soldiers, earning him the nickname of the White Death. Number 86. Finland never actually joined either the Allies or the Axis, and was actually already at war with the Soviet Union at the outbreak of World War II. Needing help in 1940, the Finnish joined forces with the Nazis to fight the Soviets, according to CNN. When peace between Finland and the Soviet Union was announced in 1944, Finland joined with the Soviets to fight the Germans. Number 87. The German city of Konstanz was not bombed by the Allies because the city left all the lights on at night so it looked like it was part of Switzerland, which was, of course, neutral. This blurred the lines between the two and the Allied pilots did not want to risk bombing Switzerland by accident. Number 88. Teddy Roosevelt's son, Ted, who was given the Medal of Honor posthumously for leading soldiers in Normandy, actually fought in both World War I and World War II. Busy guy. Number 89. When the production of Coca-Cola in Nazi Germany became impossible because of the, you know, war, German manufacturers had to come up with a new drink that would be easier to make with a mishmash of ingredients they actually had. That beverage is now known as Fanta. Number 90. Weirdly enough, the first German serviceman killed in the war was killed by the Japanese. Huh? Number 91. Weirdly enough, again, the first American serviceman was killed by the Soviet Union. Huh? Number 92. During World War II, the largest Japanese spy ring was actually located in Mexico. Wow, that's actually a good idea. I, I sure never saw that coming. Number 93. An Imperial Japanese intelligence officer by the name of Hiru Onoda fought in World War II and never surrendered in 1945. When the war ended, Onoda was hiding out in the Philippines and rejected attempts to convince him that the war was over until 1974. Eventually, his former commander had to travel from Japan to personally relieve him of duty, at which point he was pardoned by the President of the Philippines due to exceptional circumstances. Number 94. The only battle ever fought on US soil was the Battle of Attu on Attu Island, which is an incorporated territory of the United States. Japanese forces had captured the island unopposed six months after America entered the war, and the recapture took almost three weeks. Number 95. 
Fake Monopoly sets were responsible for helping thousands of allies escape from prisoner of war camps. The sets would smuggle in metal files, German money, and maps made of silk so they wouldn't rustle when being opened. Aww. Thanks, Uncle Moneybags. Number 96. The US military had similar spyware in the form of playing cards. POWs in Germany could soak the cards in water, which would then reveal maps and escape routes. Number 97. A popular myth states that during the war, Academy Awards were made out of wood, but this is sadly not true. Although it is true that metal awards were suspended for three years due to a shortage, the replacements were actually made of painted plaster. Number 98. In 1942, American radio DJs were banned from taking listener requests. It was feared that enemy spies may embed secret intelligence messages to other agents through their song choices. The reason they were worried about this was because the BBC did actually use the same technique to deliver secret messages to the Resistance and other allies across Europe. Number 99. During the war, Colonel Owen J. Baggett of the US Air Force brought down a Japanese aircraft. Okay, pretty ordinary, right? Well, think again. He did this while parachuting by hitting the pilot on the head with his M1911 pistol. What an MLG pro. Number 100! During the Second World War, penicillin was recycled and extracted from the urine of soldiers already on the antibiotics. Oh, gross, but very, very cool. Or warm, actually. P tends to be warm. But don't don't try that at home if you run out of medicine. Don't, don't, nope, no. Number 101! In one instance, nine US airmen survived crashing into the ocean when all of their planes were shot down during a bombing raid in Japan. Eight of the men were captured by the Japanese, where they were then tortured, executed, and partially cannibalized by senior Japanese officers. The other US soldier was eventually rescued by a US submarine and survived the war. That soldier was George Bush Sr., the future president of the United States. Good God. What a horrible story. But hey, what a way to end it. World War II's bad. Just watch Dunkirk, and you'll see that that's the case. End board. <laughs>